welcome to this episode of Diri TV. In this episode, we'll be discussing about feed planning. Feed planning is a very important part of the viability of your dairy enterprise. But before we get deeper in this subject, I remind you to subscribe to the Dairy TV so that you can be getting uh, these uh, lessons as they come. talk about feed planning what are we talking about first of all it's very important that we understand feeds as both fodder and concentrates and supplements and everything else that a cow needs to eat so that is very important that you see feeds that way now viability we understand viability as looking at whether it is possible to actually make business with your dairy farm and we are going to look at viability in two ways within the subject of feed planning. First is about the cows themselves. Will the cows thrive where you are starting your farm? That's about the environment. Are they going to be under heat stress? Is it the right place for the breed of cows that you're thinking about? Uh, are you going to have um, supportive uh, production system of fodder and so on? So that's about where the cows will be in the right place. But remember, it is not just about a cow being looking healthy and looking comfortable. You are in this business to be able to make a return as an investor. So there's also the second part. We let also support uh, your objective of investment as a business case. So there are two ways to look at viability, the cows and also the business case. So in this case, feed planning means that if it is not done well at the beginning, most likely you will then begin a farm and then you discover the subject of feeds has made your whole enterprise and investment uh, not, not workable. And perhaps you have to close at some point or run a very um, loss-making dairy farm. So we have now to know what feeds are we talking about. Cows are going to eat fodder, one. Cows are going to eat concentrates, dairy meal, maize jam, name them. Cows are going to require minerals and also water. So when we are planning, we have to put all these things together. Now, we then look, them, we look at them as a total ration. What do I mean by ration? If, I, if, I, if you can see what I'm holding here, I'm holding a mixed ration of different things. This, this part is, uh, I can see maize silage here. I can see rose grass. I can also see very small particles, which means that concentrates have been mixed in in this feed. So this farm is actually feeding total mixed ration. But at the planning level, they had to plan about the rose grass. They had to plan about the, the silage. They also had to plan about the, the dairy meal. I think they have put a ration that is consisting of about three things and maybe they have also put minerals so that is what I mean by ration so at the point of beginning the farm you have to know ahead of time what will the cows eat am I the kind of farm that will have maize silage napier grass rose grass and then concentrate or am I the farm that will have no napier and will have to get proteins from Lucerne so what kind of ration will I have it's only after understanding what will be in that ration that you are now able to plan if my ration will have maize silage and road grass and dairy meal, then the planning should consist of thinking about, will I grow the maize or will I buy the maize? Will I grow the road grass or will I buy it? Will I also make dairy meal at my own farm or will I outsource a ready to feed dairy meal? Then of course in most farms, they are going to buy supplements, the minerals, but the other things, there's a possibility to either make them at the farm or buy them. So when we are discussing feed planning, we are going to be thinking how do we actually estimate how much of each we need for our farm. We are going to go into a break, and after the break, we can go on to discuss more details about feed planning. See you after the break. Hi, my name is Samuel Kamau Maina. I'm a laboratory technologist. 
based in the uh, microbiology section, National Daily Regulatory Lab, which is under Kenya Dairy Board. As a consumer, you may be concerned uh, which are the tests that we do to, to guarantee the safety and the quality of the dairy products present in the retail market. When we receive samples first here in the lab, some of the uh, major tests we do is the microbiology test, which basically we cultivate bacteria and other microorganisms to check the harmful bacteria present in the milk, which probably could make you and me sick. Uh, some of these uh, microbial tests include salmonella analysis, uh, staphylococcus aureus analysis, E. coli test, uh, yeast and mold test, and many others. Kenya Dairy Board has invested in the state-of-art laboratory equipment, which include uh, the IEBC uh, machine here, which is fast, accurate, and reliable uh, in turnaround turn time of analysis. We also have somatic cell count, which basically tests uh, or analyzes the somatic cells present uh, in the milk products. Uh, for more information on our test, please subscribe the link below. Welcome back. Before the break, we were discussing the ration, and I showed you a sample of feed consisting of many different things in one serving. So that bite has all the things that the cow needs. But now the planning goes deeper than that. Where do we get all those feeds that were found in that ration? Ideally, or the best case, is that a dairy farmer should actually be able to have all the fodder grown on his farm. Some countries actually don't allow you to start a dairy farm until you can demonstrate that you have all the fodder available at your farm. You have the land resource and the ability to establish all the fodders required from your farm. So that the only thing you buy is the concentrates, the minerals, and supplements. The other things must be found on your farm. The reason they do this is because a system where fodder is grown on farm provides you the best opportunity to make a profit. When you buy fodder, the cost of production goes higher and therefore your market has to be very good for you to be able to make a profit. But to be realistic, in our context in Kenya, East Africa and some other countries where small holding dairy is very prominent, then we find that you can have a dairy farm but you don't have enough land to grow the fodder. So it means then you have to buy some of the fodders. Now the question is, what will you grow and what will you buy? We saw our cow eating rose grass, eating um, a, a silage. We also saw uh, dairy meal in there. In other cases, we also have uh, cows feeding on other forage proteins, like Lusan. What I'm holding here is Lusan. So, this could also be part of a ration and fed together in a mixed ration. So out of all these feeds, what, when do you decide, what, how do you decide what you're going to buy or to grow? Assuming that your farm is such that you are going to have more cows than the land available. When a consultant comes to your farm, the first thing he checks is that if we go for that model where certain folders are bought, are we still making a profit? Once it is confirmed, that you can still buy some fodders and still make a profit, then you have no restriction whatsoever. You can go on with your dairy, buy some fodder, and produce others. Now the question becomes, what will you grow and what will you buy? The most important thing is to put pen on paper and calculate the cost of each of these elements in the ration. So I have added lusan, alfalfa, and we had maize silage, we had rose grass. Those are three fodders. Then we have dairy meal in the same ration, and we have other things. So, what you grow is the one that is the most expensive in the ration. Every feed element has a cost to it, which is the most expensive. In your case, is it lusan? Is it maize silage? Is it rose grass? Whichever is expensive, in that order, then you allocate them your land, so that you procure the one that is cheaper. And that way, you're able to achieve a lower cost of production, especially the cost of feeding. Now, the other part is, since you have to buy some other fodders, we have covered the case of the one that you grow, 
you have we have to assume that you you grow properly you observe it you good crop husbandry until you get a good crop and a good yield per acre but then uh, the one that you are buying from outside then you have to schedule the buying reason being if you are not very careful then you find that uh, if you didn't foresee how much feed you will need in a year your cows are increasing in number your cows are falling into different lactation stages and therefore the feeding requirements are changing then you don't know how much feed you will need across the year so the most important thing is when your planning of the year is beginning depending on the culture of your farm then you have to decide that I'm going to procure all this fodder at a time when it is cheaper and when it is high quality. Let me give an example of rose grass. Rose grass is a, is a, is a, is a tropical grass that grows and harvested around the flowering stage. But most farmers would prefer to let it grow a, a little more so that it gets a little more fiber, more stem and less leaf. The more it grows, the lower the, the quality, but maybe the quantity gets more. But then, when it is in season, the price is fair. And farmers who are farming this grass do not want to store it. They want to, to sell it away as quickly as possible to avoid the, the, the need to store it. So at that time, grass is cheaper. But if you don't buy it at that time, then you wait for later, that grass has stayed in the stores or it has overgrown in the farms and then it is more expensive because it has come out outside the season it is not in season so you have got a poor a poorer quality product at a higher price but if you had procured in good time then you have a good product at a lower price so this is very important that when you do your feed planning for the feed that you are going to buy be sure to procure in season when you have a higher quality and when you have a good price. That way, the total cost of feeding will reduce. The other point, which is also very, very important for us to remember, is that feed by quantities at your farm. Different cows, different stages of animals will be feeding different levels of feed. This cow here could be um, about 600 kgs. Another cow there, because maybe it's a different breed, could be 450 kgs. All these cows, their dry matter intake per day will vary depending on their live weight, the productive potential, and the stage of lactation. So it is good to be sure that if I'm putting 100 kgs of feed on this trough, it will be enough. I'm putting 100 because there are five cows eating this amount of kgs per cow. So if you don't feed by quantities, then it's difficult to plan to know how, many, how much feed you need and when you'll be running out of feed. So feeding by quantities does not mean that you have to put all your feed on a weighing scale and then writing the number, this is how much kgs. At a farm, you can be able to improvise and decide that this bucket or this basin has so much kgs. And therefore, when you put it on the trough, then you are sure how many kgs you have put. Very important that you teach your workers to be able to feed by quantities so that you know when you're running out of feed, when to order and how much to order. And finally, the other point is that you have to be reviewing your costs of feeds. You have to be checking your records. So it's important to have that record book that is, that is recording stock. How much feed did we produce from our acre of maize? Was that good or do we need to improve that? How much did we produce from an acre of Lucerne? Was that good enough or can we make it better? Those kind of re reviews. How much, how much did we buy our, our, our rose grass? How much did we buy a bale of Lucerne? Then once you check, you're able to say, I think that a certain feed is becoming too expensive for us. We may need to rethink and maybe change one for the other. So some farms have said, maybe we don't feed Lucerne, we feed Bracaria. Same levels of crude protein, but maybe we get this one cheaper or we can actually grow it and stop buying. So those decisions emanate from a proper recording, a proper analysis, so that you can be able to see where the farm is going. A farm that has a habit of reviewing their cost are likely to meet their objectives of profits better than a farm that does not review. Now that brings us to the end of this session on feed planning. Look out for the next session where we're going to be discussing feeding and rations.